Okay, so this is just a quick start guide to when you get your set, how to set it up with your sound card, how to uh, mix your tracks for live, and just kind of a quick overview of what you need to know to get going right out of the box. So when you first get your set, it'll look something like this. Um, basically what we have is this right here is a MIDI click. So you have an audio click right here. Uh, if we if you didn't see clips here and they were over here, that means I, would be, I was using uh, MIDI track for your click track. But at this set, you can see everything set up in audio. Uh, count in. Uh, if, it, if I double click on this click, you can see it. The count in is all in MIDI. Uh, that's the talking track. And if I if if this clip was over here, that means I was basically using the audio version of this um, instead of MIDI. And then these are all audio: drums, percussion, bass, keyboards, horns, guitar, backing vocals. So. Just basically what you, what you get is, if this is your song, this whole line is the music for that song. Uh, same with this one. If I click on this song, this whole line is the music for this song, and so on and so forth, and the, and the click and, and that kind of thing. So when you first get it, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to live. Sorry about that. So the first thing you want to do is go to um, up the very top left hand corner and click on live and when you go to preferences and you're going to go over here to audio so this might be on this tab or this tab or this tab or this tab but you want to go and click on audio and then right here it says audio input you want to do pull that down and select your sound card right now I only have the internal sound card uh, for my Mac so I only have uh, inputs one and two so that's basically what I'm going to use but when you have your sound card, you'll pull it down. You'll see a USB sound card or FireWire sound card, whichever sound card you're using in there, and you want to select it. And then your out, uh, output devices, you want to pull that down and select your outgoing devices. And then for just playing back the tracks, uh, with, if you have an audio sound card that has at least four outs, you want to have, go over here to Output and click on Output. And then right here, my card only has two outputs, but you'll actually see, uh, if you have a four output card, you'll see one, two, and then you'll see the one under that that says three, four, you know, five, six, seven, eight, and so on and so forth. You just want to make sure that all those are active, so you just click on them. So basically, you'll see a bunch of these, these uh, inactive ones, and you want to make sure they're all active. Click OK, and then you are ready to go, and then you close that. And then what we want to do is is basically you'll on your click track monitoring, uh, you'll see audio uh, output and uh, mine set to one and two, and that's because I only have two outputs on my sound card. But on the um, click track monitor, you'll actually pull that down and put that to three and four, and that'll send your click out to three and four, and that's where you'll send your mix <coughs> for your drummer or whoever's hearing the click tracks. That'll go into your like in your monitor send. Now basically what this is is this is a monitor send. So th those volumes for this monitor send um, are not being controlled by down here. They're being controlled by this send right here. So if your drummer wants to hear the actual drum track right here played live, you can mute it here and that will kill it from going to front of house but you can actually turn his uh, the drums up in his in ears, so he can actually hear what the by just turning this knob right here, so he can actually hear what the uh, drums are actually doing if he wants that, um, or he can just turn it all the way off and he won't hear that anymore. And that'll get that, that kind of gives you an option is if you know the drummer wants to know what the what the what the actual drum track is doing, so he can play along and get it, make sure it's right. Um, then he has it there. You also have your count in track. So basically, anything you turn up here will turn up in your monitor click. So if he wants to have the backing track lead vocals in there, you can. If he wants to have you know guitar or whatever, you can actually just mix out whatever instruments you know he wants louder or softer. You know, or maybe he just wants just a click. Then you can turn all everything down in all these. Let me pull this out, and then you can move things around in here. You know, so you can actually just bring your little mouse up. To a corner where you see that little icon, that little um, looks like a sideways staple, <laughs> and you can move it. Things, everything back and forth, everything is movable around. So 
just to, for viewing uh, purposes. You know, like since I'm not using this track, I can make that track really small. And I'm not using this track, I can make it really small to kind of bring these out a little more so I can see what's going on. And then to fire the clips, you basically just hit um, that button. That'll Intro, play this song. Two, three, four. Uh, uh, and space bar to uh, stop it if you want. And then fire the next clip, you know. Intro, two, three, four. Space bar will stop it. Uh, you can also use the up and down arrow to go to the next song. And uh, and you can also MIDI map that too, which that's a whole different video. But So you can do it with a foot switch or whatever. But you can, go to the, you can just go to the next song and fire the clip. Intro. And you can also MIDI map all these clips being fired by like, you know, you can, if you have a uh, <coughs> sample pad or a, um, or a, or a push or anything like that, you can also MIDI map these to anything, any device that you have that's MIDI. MIDI. So now on to how to mix a song. So there's a few different, different ways of mixing the tracks. So say if we're going, if you're playing live, I'll start with, with this song right here. Basically, you're not going to hear the click or the or the count in, so I'm going to mute those, uh, and then so play this. Hear the drums come in in a second. I have the the, the drum track muted just because the uh, you know you have a live drummer. I'm assuming. So let's kill the lead vocal. Basically, what you do is is, is you come over here and like say you, need to, you don't have a guitar player, you want a guitar player to come up a little bit, and just double click on that that song for guitar. And um, there's a couple different ways. You can go over here and you can actually just raise the gain of that clip. That's the first way, and then um, and then and that works on on every clip. So say if I want to actually a little more keyboard, I double click on the keyboard, and I come over here and just raise the gain of that clip or lower the gain, depending on which way I need that to go in the mix. If I need a little more keyboard, I can do that. And the reason we do that instead of playing with these volumes, because we if we use these volumes, it's, and if I bring say I bring the bass track down for you know, and I'm thinking I'm just bringing the bass track down for that song. You're not. You're bringing the bass track down for every single song. So it's basically like this is your live mixer, basically, and this is your bass guitar player. So you, you don't want the bass down for every song. You only want the bass down for this song. So that's where you'd come over here. You double click on the clip, and you raise the gain up or down. And then um, you can also. automate them and what you do is you basically go over here to the to the to the main volume right here and just right click and click show automation <clears throat> and now I'm showing the automation for this track but since I'm on this clip I can take my little pencil tool up here and I can go through and I can draw the automation so say I want the bass to be down here but then I want it to come up here and then I want it to come back down here and then come back up and then go all the way down. So basically, you get the point. So now, if I play that clip, you're gonna watch. You're gonna watch the volume here rise and fall. Here it comes. Volume's down. You just went up a little higher. Up a little higher. We get to where it jumps really high. You see, it go really high now, and then even higher. But now the nice thing about that is, <clears throat> now if I click on the next song, you're gonna watch this bass uh, um, volume right here. If I click on the next song, it goes back down to normal. So that's how you kind of go through and mix stuff. You know, so what I what how I usually mix songs is I'll set up with a band and we'll go through each song and um, we'll get it 
mixed to all the instruments I want are playing at the volume I want with the band, basically. And then, you know, if you're in one room and you're playing that that way, pretty much whatever you're sending to the house of main, you know, the, the front of house, it's going to sound the same. You know, and you can mix on the fly, or uh, like I said before, you can send each individual track out to the sound guy and have him mix it. But the best thing to do is when you first get this thing and you're playing with the band, go through and mix each song so it sounds good with your band. And uh, and then you're good to go. Now, then another another way um, right here, if I was to go through and say um, I wanted percussion on this song, but I we have a per, our drummer's going to go and play percussion on this song, so we don't need the, the backing tracks for the percussion, <clears throat> the whole track. So I'm playing that. I mean, let me actually say the drums. Say, um, say I need the drums on this song, but I don't need them on this song. But then I need them back on this song. So if I mute this right here, if I click mute, this will mute every drum track. So it means every time I go to the next song, if I want the drummer here, I have to go back over here and manually unmute that. Or if I play the, and then this song, say the drummer was back and I didn't need the drum track anymore, then you have to manually, un un manually mute it again. May <laughs> I'm sorry. Manually. There we go. Sorry, not enough coffee. Manually um, uh, mute it again. But all you have to do if you want to do that, say you have, say the drummer's on this song, so you want to leave this song um, unmuted, but you want to, the drummer's back and playing drums again on the Robin Thicke song. So I wanted to mute that one. All you do is click on the clip, and hit zero on your keyboard, and it'll inactivate that clip. That way you don't gotta to touch this mute at all. And then say your drummer's back on that song, um, so or, or gone on that song, he's playing percussion, so you wanna leave that clip active, but he's back playing drums on this song, so you wanna inactivate that song because you don't wanna hear the backing track drums. And you click, you know, uh, hit zero on your keyboard, and it, it will inact inactivate that clip. Same thing with, say, this song, we, uh, the bass player's playing bass, and we don't want to have bass tracks. So and hit, um, click on the clip, hit zero, inactivate the clip. Uh, we also don't need um, lead vocals on this song, but we might need it on the next song. So instead of killing the whole mute button for every song, we'll just click on the clip, hit zero, inactivate. And you can go through and basically just inactivate any clips you don't need that night. And then, uh, you know, so now all those clips are inactivated. So now if I play, like, let's get rid of uh, horns and guitar. On, now you're going to sound like this. Maybe we actually don't need the drums, so. Got to be with you is my favorite thing. And we're not going to need the vocals, so click on the clip, hit zero. <clears throat> there we go. But now, you're going to need this keyboard to come up a little bit. So you click on that. If I want the whole keyboard to come up all the way across the whole song, I just, I'll just use the gain and bring the keyboard up on the gain. So... That's basically <clears throat> what you need to know to get going. Um, as far as mixing too, what I usually do is on the master bus, uh, if you go up here where it says master and double click on that, I have a limiter going on here. And um, so if I'm playing a song and it gets over zero, it'll limit it a little bit. But um, most of the time you're not going to hit it. But I just don't, you know, I just have it on there. So, um, you know, we're. It, it, songs aren't too loud going to the sound guy you know but and the same with anything if you want to do an overall uh, uh, EQ on say you want an overall EQ on the bass you can double click on that and I actually have a, an EQ going here on the bass that I've dropped in here and you get the plugins over here and so when they're playing let's say you just want a little more overall bass for the whole uh, you know you can kind of bring that up give air, but I'll give that'll give bass on every song a little more low end so you kind of kind of experiment with that and see what you like best. Same with the drums. I have some EQ going on the drums and some compression too. So if I unmute that by hitting zero, start that again. So 
you can see my drums being compressed if you're using the drums. So that's kind of a quick start guide. And then, of course, you just save it. Um, and, you know, there you go. Also, another thing, too, real quick, just for the same video. If you're building your set list, um, all you have to do is click on a song and drag it up and down. Like, say, with that song up there and this song to go next and this song to go next and this song to go next. You know, now that's how you build your set list. If you, um, if you ordered more sets for me than just um, than just one set and say you want to combine everything into a master set what, what you basically do is you click on open up one set so say this is the first set and you basically click on all the songs or one or two songs and click on all of them um, right click or control click or two finger clip click um, clip but basically um, yeah, it'd be command click, and then you'll get this little copy menu. So after you highlight it, copy them, and then what you do is you go over and you open the other. You go to go to you know open open the other setup. The other set will look like this. Just go down to the bottom clip and highlight it, and go to edit and paste. And there, you just pasted all those songs in there. So like you know, say I just want to do these three. I go over here and copy them. Close this set. Open the next set. Go back to my master set, click on the bottom clip, and click paste, and you just pasted all those songs in there. And then, of course, you can move them around. So anyhow, that's kind of the quick step, quick start, excuse me, <laughs> quick start guide to um, setting up your set and getting going on it. And if you have any questions, just email me or get my number, text me, or get a hold of me somehow, and I'll talk to you soon.